E aí galera, tudo bem? Hoje para começar a série de entrevistas aqui, eu tô com a famosa Sharon Ricardo, uma pesquisadora aqui da Monash University na Austrália. Ela foi uma das primeiras pessoas a desenvolver, usando a técnica do Yamanaka, que retira células adultas da pele para transformá-la em células tronco, mas ela fez isso com células de rim. Então, você, no caso dela, ela tirou células adultas do rim e transformou em células tronco para salvar e ajudar pessoas que têm doenças no rim. Hi Sharon, uh, thank you for agreeing with participating in this interview and uh, I'm going to ask you about your research and what you have done. So, uh, what made you decide to follow a career in science? Can you tell the, the guys that are watching? Yeah, well probably I grew up in Australia but unlike um, many people within cities, I grew up in the Australian bush and I used to go exploring. There wasn't a lot to do back in those days. And so, you know, looking through the, the lakes and streams, I'd actually pretend that I was a famous biologist and I'd pretend to discover something. And so I really had a passion for biology, at least, from when I was really little. But then when I went, I was always good at science at school, I went to university and I really didn't know what I wanted to do. And so I did a Bachelor of Science, a general Bachelor of Science, um, and found out that I loved human health and yeah. disease and that really spawned my career um, oh. through bachelor's, honours and then ultimately a PhD. Uh, and can you tell us about the potential of stem cells and why did you choose to work with them? Yeah, so for my PhD studies I studied kidney disease and I, for a very long time I studied how organs can actually undergo disease and it wasn't until about 2003 when stem cells really hit the scene and we understood there was a huge potential for organ regeneration through stem cells within organs but also we didn't know then about the Yamanaka um, mm -hmm. discoveries at that time. So in the early 2000s I switched my focus to trying to understand how stem cells can actually help patients with kidney disease. I, from my postdoctoral studies um, at Penn State University, it was in a clinical department, so I really wanted to relate stem cell therapies to patient health um, and translation into the clinic. Okay. We have seen, as I said to the guys before, we have seen many advances in stem cells research. One of them was the discovery that you said of Yamanaka, that adult cells, adult cells from the skin could be reprogrammed to become pluripotent stem cells. And using this technique, you were the first researchers in the world to achieve the generation of stem cells from totally differentiated kidney cells, mm -hmm. which is a very difficult thing. Can you tell us about the day that you achieved this and mm -hmm. what are the feelings and applications of this in yeah. the clinics? Okay, so probably, let me take you back to 2000 when stem cells took a huge, you know, huge discoveries. All that research was based on embryonic stem cells. Mm -hmm. So all the foundation studies were um, from looking at the embryo. However, there was a lot of controversy at the time because you had to use aborted fetuses to derive the IPF, to derive the stem cells. It wasn't until Yamanaka's discoveries um, in 2007 where I actually really understood the potential for human health. And that is that you can take a human skin cell and reprogram that cell, wiping the, the memory of that cell clean back to an embryonic stem cell like fate. And so induced pluripotent stem cells made huge leaps and, and discoveries for being able to apply stem cell therapies for patients with kidney disease. And it's at that time that I was very excited. So we had access to human kidneys, we had access to human tissue through um, a hospital here, and so we were able to take um, kidney cells from patients and actually reprogram them back to an induced pluripotent stem cell and therefore for the first time could actually make tailor-made stem cells from these patients in the hope that they could be delivered back to those patients to correct the disease. And so really, you know, it was quite a, um, a remarkable discovery because yeah. it was the first in the world. It got a lot of media attention. Um, a lot of patients still contact me today asking for trials for stem cell therapies. And actually, I think it's moved past um, you know, the initial discovery now. So now we're actually taking skin cells from patients with genetic kidney disease mm -hmm. and we're able for the first time to correct those genetic mutations 
in the hope once again to deliver those stem cells back to those patients to cure their disease. Yeah, uh, you said that a lot of uh, pa actually patients uh, contact you Absolutely. to try uh, stem cell research, uh, stem mm -hmm. cell therapy. But uh, we know that it's, uh, the stem cell research is really uh, in the beginning, and uh, this is a kind of big achievement. But uh, there are some things that are not possible now, like uh, treating a patient uh, who has kidney disease. Mm -hmm. But what what do you think about the future? Uh, how do you think these stem cells would be in the next years? Mm. And do you think that 20 years is enough to achieve a stem cell therapy? Yeah, I, I actually, I really do. From um, you know, 15 years ago, I would never have imagined how far in advance we are now. Mm. So patients with kidney disease do receive stem cell therapy now, but they're stem cells from blood cells, mesenchymal stem cell therapy. Oh. So these are in clinical trials. Now stem cells from these induced pluripotent stem cells are now just in preclinical trials but there has already been some trials in monkeys initially uh -huh. but I think you know patient trials will be not far off so I really yeah. you've got the whole world working towards one goal when we do kidney um, brain research you know trying to replace neurons is really um, advanced in great degree so I, I, I think that it will be quite um, right. closer than you think. Good. Do you think stem cells can have application in cancer? For example, stem cells that can uh, have actions against cancer cells? Mm. But it's actually really interesting you talk about that because I talked about embryonic stem cells was the foundation for the whole field of, of stem cell therapy. But actually, stem cells allow us to really look into how cancers grow. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, a cancer is an, you know, it's, it's an overgrowth. It, there's yeah. a proliferation, an uncontrolled proliferation. So actually, a lot of stem cell research feeds back to provide um, more insights into how to stop cancer growth. Um, so they actually are very interlinked. Finally, could you see something, any feature or mindset that was decisive for your success as a scientist. And uh, could, could you give any advice to the students that are watching or people who are watching and are really interested in science and why they would choose, choose science as their career in life? Mm. I, I think for science, I mean, you know, as I mentioned from an early childhood, I always had a fascination with biology and, and how living these systems worked. But really it's that passion for, I found that passion through, I liked being at the bench, I actually liked doing animal testing, I liked to be able to try to cure human disease, um, but I always tell my students and my kids, and the mother of two as well, to do things that you're passionate about, and then you'll get good grades, and that will open up opportunities. Um, so I think it's, and I also like that I'm still working at a university, so you're still learning. I never think that I've come to the end of my study, because there's still many things that you know you want to discover and even for me now I really enjoy listening to other scientists seminars I love going to conferences because you can just sit back and you know absorb all this information that I still think is really yeah. fascinating um, so it's yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just that drive and you know search for knowledge that really keeps you going and, and yeah. pushing boundaries what you said is really important. Uh, in science, you always keep learning, and uh, if you are interested, you will search more. Uh, you will find more f sources of information. So uh, it's important also you to know which one is correct and which one is not reliable. So science is science is beautiful, and I hope you like the video. Thank you, Sharon, for uh, you, having a couple of minutes to talk with us. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please click on like. And thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Have a nice thank day. Thank you.